assets relate to company resources such as phones, laptops, or cars made available to employees, which Sage HR allows you to keep track of. Let's have a look at how to set up and administer company assets in Sage HR. From the top right, click your name icon, then Settings. Click on Assets and then General. Sage HR administrators can set up a specific employee as an asset administrator, for example, an employee from the IT department or can even assign this role to managers. Asset administrators have the following permissions, which include accessing and maintaining inventory and asset categories, can view reports, can allocate assets to employees, can return assets from employees. In this case, you have been asked to assign Robert Varma, the IT administrator, as an asset administrator by adding his name from the drop-down menu and to also allow team managers and direct managers to be able to give or return assets for their employees by checking the box. Make sure to save your changes by clicking on Save. The Inventory tab allows you to add a new asset manually one by one by clicking on Add New, enter the asset name and any other additional details when necessary and click Save. Or you can save time by importing the assets details through the Import option. Always download the template from here to ensure you're using the most recent version and it is vital that the template is filled out correctly to avoid any issues with the import. The first row of the template contains the field headers and an asterisk indicates which fields are mandatory. The second row highlights any formatting requirements to be aware of. For a perfect import, do not delete the first two rows. The inventory also provides a list of all available assets with details such as the category of asset, asset number, serial number, and to whom this asset has been allocated. The action column allows you to give or return the asset, make edits to the asset details, or delete the asset. The history of each asset can be viewed by clicking on the asset name. You can also assign categories to your assets, allowing you to define the asset type, which is useful for reporting purposes. Click Add New to add a new category. Create a title for your category and then click Add. This can be edited or deleted as necessary. However, a category can no longer be deleted once it is assigned to an asset. If you want to input additional information when adding or editing an asset, you can do the same by going on the custom fields. Click on Add New and type in the field name. You can choose to enter this information in the asset details by either selecting the field type to be text, drop down, or date. The text field type will allow you to enter any kind of required information. The drop down option will allow you to choose the necessary information on an already predefined list. Let's say that for any new asset added for the company, the following details are now required. Supplier's name, if maintenance is required, the purchase date. You can add the field name, supplier's name, and the type as text, since there can be several suppliers. Select the options for the field to be visible to employees and in inventory and reports. For maintenance required, you can add the option yes or no in the drop-down options, allowing you to choose when you're adding a new asset. Add another field for the date purchase and choose date as the type. Now, when adding a new asset, these fields will appear and can be filled with the required information. Once the permissions have been set and the inventory list has been created, you are now ready to track company assets given to employees.